So today here we are going to make a wine tote template. This wine tote template is one that I've been making for the last few years. It's been very popular in our stores online and in Grandscape and, in, and uh, here in, in Old Town. Um, it is deceivingly complicated. And what I mean by that is it's not complicated at all. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not a very complicated project at all. It looks more complicated than, a very, uh, than, than it really is. It has an interesting gusset style. I don't know what to call the gusset style. I'm sure there's a fancy French name for it. Um, but I just call it a briefcase style gusset. It works out very well. So the takeaway here is not just making the, the wine tote itself. The takeaway is going to be you can make the wine tote. You can sell wine totes. You can make them very easily. But more than that is using the gusset style we're going to apply here to other projects. Uh, once I learned how to make this, 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 this gusset style, I started making things like uh, briefcases. I started making bottle bags. I've made, um, I've made all different types of cases to cover different uh, jewelry boxes and things like that, you can almost apply it to anything. And I think that you will find that with just a few changes to the measurements here, uh, really just to the height, width, and depth of an object, if you know those, you can make a, this style bag for it as well. So let's jump into it. As you can see here, I do sell acrylic templates for this, uh, for this item. Uh, you can buy those on OatenLeatherGoods.com. I'd love for you to buy them. Thanks for supporting me if you do. Um, and uh, we're going to, let's go ahead and take a look at some leather. So I'll slide this out of the way and we'll, we'll jump into it. So today, the leather we're going to use is this Italian vegetable tan leather. I'll take a moment to say this. If you didn't know that vegetable tan leather comes in things other than the natural color, uh, here's, your, <laughs> here's, your, 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 here's your heads up about that. Vegetable tan leather comes in many different st styles and many different colors and different finishes. This is one Italian uh, version of it. I really like this one. I believe it's called Missouri. And it's from a uh, tanner called La Perla, I believe. It's called Missouri. And this is a hickory color. Really a big fan of this leather. It's going to make a beautiful wine tote. Um, and we're going to start cutting some pieces of it, uh, pieces off. To start, the first thing we're going to do is let's just make this a little more manageable so we don't have to worry about this whole shoulder. We're going to take our template and we're going to start off cutting off segments of it. The good thing about the templates is um, once you take off this backing, they're actually transparent. So if you have a side of leather that you're not quite sure, you need to find yourself, you need to work around some of the different scars and marks and things like that in it. I personally think that some of those marks are very beautiful. But if you need to work around it, the transparent templates will help you with that. Okay. So let's just break this down into some more manageable pieces. I'm going to use my trim knife here and just quickly rough this out. Obviously, there's going to be a little waste here, and um, that's okay with me. I don't want to be overly wasteful with how I trim this out, but a little bit is fine. I'm going to prioritize efficiency over making sure that every millimeter of leather is used to the fullest. All right, so there's that. We're gonna need two of these. All right, had to go answer the door real quick. This is a shop and uh, it's pretty lived in. So uh, as we're doing these videos, you're gonna hear some background noises, things like that. Maybe the doorbell ring, a customer comes in. It is what it is. Um, let's finish trimming this out. We need a piece to get the front and back here. I have a mark here on this hide a leather I don't want to use. Looks like some kind of ink. So we'll work around that, which means we may not be as efficient as I was hoping, but still. This is a nice panel, a little darker in this, this color, but that's fine. We'll make that the back panel probably. How you use your leather is completely up to you. You can mix and match the leathers. Excuse me. You can, how you use your leather is completely up to you. You can mix and match them if you like. Whatever makes sense to you or you can either mix uh, in some exotic leathers. I've done this bag also in alligator. It made a really beautiful, though be an expensive bag. I was very proud of that. You can see that on Instagram. We got those. We need a top piece. Will that fit there? Yeah, that's going to fit there. So we'll skip over this blemish, but there's enough for this piece. This is the flat piece that's going to go over the top. that. that one will hold off. Actually, we can get our bottom piece out of this. No 
it's going to work out just fine. Let's see. Let's do it like that. That's fine. And then for the handle, I'm actually going to be a little more careful with the cutting the handle to make it easier to glue up. And I mean, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. If I go ahead and cut straight lines on it now, it just makes it easier to line everything up properly. This one is, I'm going to cut this piece 15 and a half inches long. And make sure that I have enough room for the whole thing there. Cutting along this straight edge here, probably better, better to use a rotary cutter if you have that available to you. Uh, I've done this enough where I don't nick the acrylic ruler. But a rotary cutter will work really well for that as well. Also, we'll cut another piece. I think we made this a little wider than an inch. We'll do the same thing here. And that'll just make for a cleaner glue up. Now, I guess what I'm alluding to is that we are going to make that a double layer handle. I prefer the handle to be double layer. You don't have to. Um, once you get into this, and there's no real, there's no big rules to how you make your wine tote or your, your, your bag. Make it in whichever way it makes sense to you. Use the materials you have on hand and it'll come out great. All right, we can get rid of this big piece here. Tuck this away on the shelf that goes here. Now we have a cleaner workbench. Let's start by gluing up some of these pieces. So they can be ready for us when we um, when we need them. So the rotor cutters here is my rotor cutter. I'll trim off this piece here. I'm going to grab some craft paper to put across my table. Doing this glue up process just so we can keep things a little tidier. Give me one second. I'll grab that. Okay. So this will just help us keep our tabletop clean. We grab two pieces because I've learned if you're going to grab one piece, you might as well go ahead and grab two because you're going to need the second piece eventually. So that's what I do now. This is a much bigger web, uh, workshop than I had in the past. And uh, we definitely get our steps in around here. So I'm learning to be a little more efficient with things. This leather, this Missouri, has a bit of a smooth backing on it. Uh, it's pasted really nice. I mean, it's, it's a great leather. It's one of my favorite ones. Just to make sure the glue adheres better, I'm going to take a moment just to rough this up a little bit. Nothing fancy here, no rock science involved. This is just a, a rougher. You could do this with a piece of glass, or you can do this with a, um, with a knife, a back of a blade. Doesn't have to be anything special. This uh, device tool makes it easy, but uh, you can see the brand on there if you care for that. But you can get these in lots of different brands. I will leave um, a link to some of my favorite roughers in the show notes be beneath. So if you're looking for any of these tools, in fact, I'll try to make sure there's links to almost all these tools down below. If you're looking for something specific, like these trim knives or the different cutters I use, um, those will be down below, okay? Make sure I say that. And we'll do both sides. Is this absolutely necessary? Uh, maybe not right but my goal is if, is if we're going to go through the process of making this we're going to go through the process of you know building a nice item using a nice level like this we want it to last as long as possible we don't want it to come across or come apart or delaminate sometime in the future uh, granted you know wine totes aren't like belts and they're not heavy use items they're not like gear you're going to use in the field but still if you're going to do it you might as well do it right okay so there's that we're also going to need to um rough up this piece here. This is going to end up being the bottom portion of the uh, the wine tote. So we might as well, actually no, this is not the one. See, even I make mistakes. We actually want to rough up this one. The bottom is not going to be lined, but the top flap that goes over the top of the wine tote, that will be lined. Uh, I tend to line it in a suede or not, like a kip leather. 
So let's take a moment to rough this one up a little bit as well. It's not important that you get all the way to the edges because this is going to be this is the oversized piece. We're obviously going to glue it and laminate it to a piece of suede or kip. Haven't quite decided which one it's going to be yet. And then we will trim it back, back to be this exact side size. The advantage of that is that now the edges will not have glue on them. Same thing with the handles. We'll trim it back. The edges won't be covered in glue. They'll be perfect. All right. All right. So let's get some glue on. Well, might as well go ahead and figure out what are we going to line this with. Let's see. What do we have available to us? Hmm. We have suede, of course. That's the easy one. We use a lot of suede here. But I think this time, I think I am going to use the veg tan or kip this time. So give me a second. That was going to be... Let's see. See, nope, that's not it. Actually, on the fly, I changed my mind. This is not Vest Tan. Actually, this is Vest Tan, but it's not Kip. This is actually a, uh, a leather that is intended, it's Veg Tan, uh, it's intended for lining. It's intended to line inside the shoes or prosthetics, surprisingly enough. So let's cut off a piece of this. There's the doorbell again. Let's cut this and then we'll check the doorbell. All right. One moment. Okay, back at it. So we've cut off our blank piece. That's going to be good enough for us to apply some glue to now. Flip some, all those over. I think that's a pretty good color match. That'll work. So if you watched any of my videos in the past, you'll know that I try my best to use a water-based glue on most of what we do around here. Has no fumes. It works, at least the one that I use, works just as well as a solvent-based glue, especially for veg tans and drier leathers. If you have a really oily leather, maybe the water-based glue will not work as well, um, but that's a little subjective, to be honest with you. But on vegetable tan leathers, it works extremely well. In fact, the manufacturer of this adhesive, which is, this is Aqualim 315, what I'm using, says you don't even have to apply it to both sides. Now, as a matter of habit, I do apply it to both sides because that's what I'm used to. Uh, because when you use a solvent-based contact adhesive like a Bars or a Masters, you do need to apply it to both sides. So I, I still do that. Uh, if I'm in a rush, sometimes I'll skip that step, but we're moving quickly today, but there's still time to apply it to both sides. So let's do that. Now, it works much the same way as those solvent-based glues. You're going to apply it wet. You're going to let it tack up a little bit, and once it tacks up, you're going to put the two pieces together. Don't be confused. <clears throat> by some of the other white glues that are out there that are marketed for leather. Just because it's white doesn't make it the same. This is Aqualim 315. Again, this is another product I'll have linked below. If you haven't tried it yet, I would highly suggest you, I highly recommend you try it. Uh, if, for nothing else, for your health, it doesn't have all the solvents. I don't need to make sure there's a fan going or, um, or uh, you know, have proper ventilation. There's no ventilation required with this one. It just works. Rinia, who's the manufacturer of this glue, does make a solvent-based glue. And I do keep a can of it, to be honest with you. Sometimes it's, 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 it's a good product to have and it's the right tool for the, uh, for the job. But day-to-day, -day, for probably 98% of what we do around here, we are using a water-based based contact adhesive called Aqualim 315. Now, if I was going to do a lot of these at once, 
this takes a lot of time gluing up like this. So if I had a whole bunch of them to do and we're making them for the store for online, we'd normally do these in batches of 10 or 12. I would use a paint roller to do this. It is uh, it's resin glue out nice and thin and it's far more efficient than using this little spatula thing to do this. But we're only making one today. That's all we need to make. So this method would be just fine. This is our finished leather. Apply it on that pretty quickly. It doesn't need to be thick, just like your, you know, if you're again, if you're using solvent-based glues, you don't need to add, apply the glue very thin, very thick. In fact, applying it too thick could be a hindrance. One, it dries much slower, and creates lumps and bubbles in your finished product when you're lining things. So, just put a thin layer on there, just enough to soak into the pores of the leather, and leave a little bit of a top coat. So let's give this a moment to tack up. While we do that, we'll work on something else. We'll slide this out of the way. Yep, it's already grabbing on there. We'll get our glue out of the way. And we'll move on to the next piece of this wine tote puzzle. All right, so while the glue's tacking up, let's talk about our side pieces, our front and side pieces. So you're going to have two gusset pieces, side gusset pieces, one, two, maybe, and then a front piece and a back piece. I'm going to use this dark piece as the back, and this as the front here. Um, Nothing special to these. This is just going to be a matter of cutting them out. Uh, just so I don't bore you to death on this one, I will probably mark these very quickly. I'm going to use my rotary cutters to do most of the cutting. Then I'll use my Japanese trim knife to do the, the finer details like right here in the corner. And uh, this will go pretty fast. So let's, uh, let's do the first cut real quick. And then we'll, uh, we'll just be done. All right, we got our cutting done. Um, nothing we can't do with a rotary cutter and a little trim knife. Uh, that's the way to do that. For these right angles that we've done on these pieces here, this little Japanese trim knife is really easy to get into those corners and knock those pieces out without a lot of fuss and muss. Makes it easy. People always ask me what I do with my scraps. Honestly, this is too small to do much of anything with, so we're just going to set that aside. All right. Uh, what we have so far is going to be our bottom piece. Our two side gussets. See, all together, these three pieces make up the entire gusset. Then we have our front and back piece. The front and back piece are going to get treated a little differently depending on how we use it. The back piece we're going to mark out where the flap goes. We're also going to put a logo on it. And the front piece is going to have a hole there for our, our, our fastener. Okay? So be mindful of that. This piece is, this gusset is really the whole crux of the whole project right here. We will show you how this works. I'll put this together. We'll do some close ups of how this goes together. Um, I'll give you a little preview, but that's how it starts off. All right? There's a little preview of how that will go together. And then just these tabs just kind of fold down. So that's it. But before we do that, we need to do some skiving. And we also need to put our other pieces together that we set the glue, we've set aside to, to tack up. Let's look at that real quick. These are nice and tacky now. Uh-oh. Because we went ahead and cut them with straight lines, it makes it really easy to line the pieces up and know that um, you're not going off the edge or anything when you start doing your trimming. But also, remember, I just kind of slapped the glue on here pretty wild, okay? I think our fingers will rub that off. That's just some over some glue that went over the edges. Slap the glue on there pretty wild. So we don't want to use that as our, as our, our finished edge. Instead... Instead, we're going to use our straight edge and we're going to cut it so that there will be absolutely no glue on the cut edge once we're done. 
Okay. Do that in a moment. And then the same thing with our flap. Start measure it up, get a good visual, make sure you're gonna be on the edge, you're gonna be lined up perfectly. Then start on one end. I'm gonna stretch this bottom piece just a little bit and just roll this down nice and e nice and evenly. Use your hands to make sure the glue is adhered properly. Okay. We'll take this, we'll trim that one out, <clears throat> and we'll also trim out our handle, three quarter inch wide handle, and we'll go from there. Okay, give me a second, we'll knock that out real fast. All right, we'll clean up our table a little bit, get it organized again, we'll double check all of our parts. I like to make sure I do this over and over again. I wanna make sure I have everything I can cut, everything that can be cut, I wanna make it sure it's cut up front. So, side pieces, We'll match up our templates here. Top pieces. Okay. Handle. Great. All right. Everything's accounted for. So, next thing we need to do is we need to start the process of prepping uh, to put this together. There's certain things that we need to burnish now. There's certain things that we need to go ahead and stitch up now that we can't stitch up later. And there's also going to be some skiving we need to do. Um, because I have it, I am actually going to use my bell skiver to skive. We probably won't get that on camera today. Uh, I'll show you how. We'll do a whole other video about how the bell skiver works later. Uh, but for today, I'm going to take it over the bell skiver. We'll skive the edges down. We'll do that in a moment. Before we do that, let me mark out where some of these holes are going to go. Primarily on this top flat piece, we need to mark out where the locks fastener, which is my preferred fastening method for this item, is going to go. If you don't want to use locks for your wine tote, that's completely fine. You could do this with a strap and a buckle. You could do this with a snap. Snap may be a little difficult because of how you'd have to press on it to close it. But there's plenty of other ways you could do a closure on, uh, on this item. Okay. We're also going to mark out here where the handles are going to attach. That is on the acrylic template here. We just kind of scratch a line there and we'll use a hole punch to knock that out in a moment. Make sure to do that on both sides. Just scratching a line. You probably can't see it on the camera, but I just use my scratch all scratch a little line there where we need to trim those out. Okay. On the back, this is gonna be the back piece. I have a hole cut out here in the template just to indicate where your logo should go. You don't have to put it there. You can put it wherever you want. You can put it on the front, that's fine. You can put it on the back of the flap, that's up to you. This is just where I choose to put my logo in that bottom, bottom of the back, right? I don't like my uh, customers feel like I'm making it. I don't like my customers feeling like they're billboards for me, so I prefer to put my logo on the back. Um, I'll take this over to the other press, the manual press we have over there, and I'll stamp that in in a little while. And on the front side, what we want to mark out here is where the other Part of the locks fastener is going to go. So we marked it out on the flap. We also need to mark out the other hole on the front panel. So just so I don't forget, we can go ahead and knock out those holes real fast. I use a number 11 Weaver Master Tools punch for these holes. That's probably a 3 8 inch hole, I bet. Something like that. You can also do it on, on the flap now. Now, let me go back and say, I do line the flap. You don't have to line the flap. You could choose to just use a heavier piece of leather. Um, you're also going to notice that I'm going to stitch all the way around the flap as well. I think it gives a nice professional presentation, but it's your bag. Do it how you want. If you don't want to stitch the flap, don't stitch the flap. Or maybe you choose to um, just learn by not stitching now and just getting this construction of the bag down. And then at a later date, you want to stitch. Those are all options. It's up to you. Let's also punch out the holes for the handle. This is a 1 8 inch punch. We'll attach the handle using a double sided or double cap rivet. Just so it slides a little bit. All right, so the next thing is we're going to need to do some stitching on this. If you're using the template, there's some holes down here in the bottom of the template 
it tells you where the stitching needs to be done. Uh, it tells you where to start, it tells you where to stop, because there's gonna have to be, it's gonna have to be done in two different motions. I'll explain what I mean. We're going to stitch the flap, the decorative stitch going all the way around, and then we're gonna stitch this the rest of the box here once we affix it to the um, to the body. I like my stitch lines to be straight, so I'm actually gonna use this uh, as a guide. Just to scratch some lines so that when I get to the sewing machine, I know exactly where my stitches are supposed to go. And you don't have to go very deep, it's just a light scratch so you can see it. That's all that's required there, okay? So now I know I'm gonna start my stitch here, work all the way around, back down here, and I'll stop. Then once I fix this to the back, I will then finish out the box here, which will fix it to the to the, the to the back of the uh, the bag. All right, so that's that. There's let's see what else we need to do. We have our strap here. We can go ahead and stitch our strap up now too, since we're going to take go to, take this to the sewing machine in a moment. We'll stitch those two things up, and we will also put a logo on the back of this. All right, let's head over to the sewing machine, and we'll get the, the sewing piece of this started. Okay. Easy. Let's do the uh, flap now. So the flap, we're only going to stitch from, we're not going to stitch the full box here. That's, uh, we'll do that once we have fixed it to the back of the bag. We're only going to stitch from this point all the way around and stop here. And then once we fix it, we'll pick up the rest of the box. Cool. We'll go back to work, bitch. Now. All right. So our first pass of stitching has been done. We've got our handle done. Uh, while we were at it, we went ahead and put our logo on the back. Knock that out. We've got the top flap already done. So the liner is now stitched in. Again, I'll point out ad nauseum. I know. Don't stitch all the way around yet. Right. We're going to do the finish. Finish that box stitch once we actually put it onto the uh, the tote itself. So what can we do now? The next step for us is we're going to bevel some of these pieces and we're going to go ahead and burnish some of these pieces. Um, beveling is going to give it a nice finished look and feel in the hand, especially on this handle. We're going to take our beveler. I use a Ron's tool. Uh, Ron's tools. this is the number two beveler. Pretty big beveler. Kind of my go-to for a lot of things. It has been sharpened or stropped already, so it's pretty smooth. Going to knock off that sharp edge on the corner. I'm not pushing too hard. I'm making, keeping it pretty light. I'm going to do both sides.
do the th same thing to the flap here. Get the underside. No, we'll probably leave the underside alone. That line doesn't want to uh, bevel that well. It's not bad, but not the best either. We'll probably leave that alone. We'll catch that. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of the edges there once we do the, the burnishing. Uh, we can also take time to burnish the tops of these pieces because once we put it together, it certainly makes it a lot harder to get to. And then the bottom piece, we want to do some burnishing on that too. Let's see, we're going to burnish this inside edge here. Do the best you can. It's a little tight in there. Again, just knocking off the, the sharp corner. Okay, doing the other side is a little superfluous, so we'll, we'll skip that. All right. We'll probably do a whole other video at some point on just how I burnish. Um, if you ask 10 leather guys how to do a burnishing on anything, you're probably going to get 12 different answers. So I'm no different. I have my way of burnishing. Uh, it works for me. If you have your own specific way of burnishing, do that, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's really about the outcome, not about the journey on this one. Sometimes it's, not, it's, sometimes it's the opposite of that, but on this one, it's more about the outcome. And I'm happy with the outcome I get with my burnishing. Now, I will describe it to you, though. I just hit that with a little die. I use these refillable die pins. Again, I'll have these linked down in the, in the description below. Uh, you can find them there and uh, link directly to, the, to them and, and get some for yourself. I find them extremely handy. Uh, old school guys would use something like this. Uh, I forget the name of this, but I think this is a Bob Douglas tool, maybe. Whereas, uh, or maybe this is a Sheridan tool where they'd put a little piece of felt in between these little uh, uh, pliers here. Not pliers, I guess these would be more like tweezers. Push this up to lock it in place. And they would dip that in little jars of dye that would be all over their table and use that to dye the edges. This essentially, these are the same thing, right? Um, if you like the old school vibe, and sometimes I do like the old school vibe, this works out really handy. I have it. I love this tool. I'm happy I got it. But for day-to-day -day work, these markers work just fine. We have the inside corner there as well. A lot of burnishing. You know, people say, uh, you always want to know about what how, how leather work goes. I say most of it is just sweeping up the floors and doing a lot of burnishing, to be honest with you. Lots of burnishing and leather work. I guess you could skip it if you wanted to, but your product surely would not be as good as, uh, as if you take the time to do a nice burnish. A nice burnish shouldn't take all day long. This leather is very nice. It already has a lot of wax and tallows and things like that in it. So even without tokenol or any kind of edge finishing um, solution or cream, it burnishes just with just nicely with the uh, moisture from the from the dye. I'll see if I can get it closer to the, the camera in a moment so you can see just how nice it burnishes up with nothing more than a little moisture from that um, that oil based dye. And that's just a Feebing's dye in that pin. Certainly other dyes would work fine too. The water-based dyes, not so sure about those. Those get a little gummy, which I don't like that. But the oil-based, alcohol-based, Angelus dyes, things like that, those all work just fine in the pin like that. Just a quick little burnish. Let's see. I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually nice and shiny. It's good burnish. That's all we need on that, okay? The bottom's done. Let's do the top. And let's just see how fast I can do the top of this. Die. My pin's running a little dry, so I need to refill it, but it's got enough in there. Piece of canvas is all I'm using. Sometimes I do use a wooden slicker. I have one here. It's a wooden slicker. Wooden slicker will work okay too. But usually, I'm just going to use a piece of canvas. Works for me.
On this one, I am going to dye the bottom two. Sometimes I forget how it aligns. I just want to make sure there's no raw edges. If the leather you're using is too thin to do a proper bevel, just put it on a table like that. That works too. Let me do the inside corner because I think that may be shown as many times as I've made this tote. Many, many times. Even I forget sometimes which ones show and which ones don't. But we'll just do it just in case. Still wet, so it still burnishes just fine. Do the top as well. So that takes care of the gusset pieces. We still need to do the front. Again, we're just doing the top. These are the edges that we're not going to be able to get to later once we assemble. So now for the more complicated pieces, we prime this a little bit, a little more dye. And we will definitely take our time on this one because we don't want to get dye all over the, the liner. Just keep that in mind as you're dyeing the edges. Uh, I didn't say this, but you could also paint the edges if you think painting the edges is easier. Heck, you could even do the edges in a different contrasting color if you want to go that route. Contrasting stitch, maybe. Contrasting color on the edges. Those would all be fine, and it's really just a matter of personal preference. I tend to go with a pretty simple edge, though. That's perfect there. And we'll just work our way around. Again, it doesn't take a lot to do a, a nice burnish. Especially when you're using nice leather. The nice leather just tends to burnish easier. Because I trimmed, because I, I glued this up oversized and then we trimmed back, there's not a lot of glue on the, the outer face to have to contend with. That would certainly make this a lot more difficult. You'd have to go back and sand that glue down. You can't burnish over glue. You can't do a good burnisher with glue. That would certainly just mess you up. I think we're almost there on this piece. And then the very last piece is going to be the strap, which is arguably the hardest of them just because it's narrow and hard to hold on to at times. Just take your time with it, not in a rush. It'll come together. In fact, it'll be easier, to, it may be easier to, to burnish than, than this piece because it's not lined. Or it is lined, but it's only lined with uh, the same type of leather. So we already know that leather burnishes really well. 
Again, just priming my uh, ink, my pen a little bit so the die comes out nice and easy and smooth. Should probably have an apron on for this. I want to mess up my nice shirt here. One of my favorite shirts. Wrong color, but favorite shirts nonetheless. We like maroon shirts around here. Some of you would get that. So that's required on that one. And I'm just doing them in sections because I do want to keep that dye damp or moist while I'm burnishing. The fact that it's damp is what helps. I'm sure if you worked at it long enough, you could burnish dry leather, but you'd have to work a lot harder. You may be able to pick up on the camera. As I'm burnishing, you can see where it goes from kind of a matte color to more of a glossy color. That just tells you the burnish is almost done. Those fibers are laying down nice and smooth. Still an edge of the leather too at the same time. Work around the corners. A little here, a little there. Take your time. Corners go really fast. Yep, nice and glossy already. Again, this is just Fabings dye. That's not to say that I don't use tokenol. I do use tokenol. And probably when we uh, we go to do the burnish the gussets, we'll probably use a little token all on those. But for these, it's fine. token all. I think it's just token all. Not token all. Either way, I'll have, uh, if you haven't used that as a burnishing agent, it's probably my favorite burnishing agent right now. Uh, it's very popular and I'll have a link to that down below as well. Hey Ryan, there's a package back here for her. Oh, there? there is. Okay. Matt, you want? He'll get it for you. It's at the it's at the back door. It's an Amazon package. It's at the back door. It's an Amazon package. You'll see it right by the back door. Of course. As we're filming, we still have customers coming in out the the uh, the shop, which is great. So it's when you see me look up and gaze around, that's probably what you're seeing is me looking up front to see what's going on up there while the team takes care of the customers. Okay, so the very last thing I'll do on this trap is I will do kind of a side burnish like that. It's cleaned it up a little bit. It also evens out some of the dye if I missed any little spots. Flip it over, do the same thing. Okay. So at this point, we have all of our pieces pretty much burnished and ready to go. You know what I didn't do, however? I didn't put the holes in this. Um, we'll take our template. We'll mark our holes very quickly. Punch out the hole. Don't need it just yet, but it'll be done when we do need it. Cool. All right, so there's your handle. Everything's pre-burnished. We'll take a moment to straighten up a little bit. All right, the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to prep the gusset pieces for assembly. So we'll grab our three gusset pieces, the bottom and the two sides, 
And let's talk quickly about how these are going to go together. I kind of gave you a little bit of a preview earlier about how they fit together, but we're going to start getting to the basic, the, the specifics now. Um, you can see they do fit together. They, they puzzle together perfectly. All right. But because this is, they're going to have a 90 degree angle in it, this is going to be turned like that and they're going to slot together like that. Ultimately what's going to happen is this edge is going to be turned up. This edge is going to be turned up and they're going to meet like that. Hard to explain, hard to understand right there. Maybe when we glue it together, it'll make it even easier for you to, um, to understand what we're talking about, okay? Um, so the next thing we need to do, we need to thin these edges out a little bit because, again, we need, to turn them up, we need to turn them up. The stitch allowance I have is basically going to be this, I think it's 3 eighths inches, I think, which is the size of that little wing there. So we want to skive back. Let's just do right at a, just right at 3 eighths, three eighths inches. We want to skive back just a little bit. Let's take this over to the skive, the bell skiver. And um, we'll get into it. We'll show you how that's done. I'm going to take some scrap leather with me. Take a piece off the floor if we need to. Because we need this leather to help dial our, our uh, sky in very quickly. All right, let's walk over. I'm going to just set it up for a minute. Test it, make sure I don't screw something up. Yes, that's pretty good. Okay. Got to prep mentally for this. Make sure it's all fine. I think we are. It's going kind of rough. Okay, we got through that. I didn't screw it up. That's always a good sign. Um, using a bell skiver uh, should be a fairly easy process, but somehow I always manage to, to mess that up. So I'm always a little nervous when I do it. Uh, but not as nervous as I would be if I was doing it by hand because I'm not that guy. Some of you are and you're great at skiving by hand. Um, I'd rather use my bell, my bell skiver. So that's done. You know what we need? We need a little, well, we can use it. We're going to use glue. That's fine. I'm going to use a little glue here in a moment. Let me see. What I want to do is I just want to mark where I need that glue. I'm going to slot those together. Make a little mark there because we're going to glue that down, make it easier for stitching. All right. So a nice light mark. We'll take our rougher again. That's not a rougher. There it is. Rough that up. Just take off some of that finish just so the glue adheres a little better. Same thing on this little wing here. Knock off some of that. I didn't skive that today, but you could skive that if you wanted to. It's optional. Depending on the leather you're using, the temper of it, thickness of it, you may opt not to skive. I prefer to skive. I think it turns, it just turns a little better when you do. This is, uh, this leather is probably five ounces thick. I think that's a good weight. Holds itself up. The bag doesn't collapse on itself, it doesn't get floppy, no one likes a floppy bag. 
Put a little glue there, that wing. Let it tack up. We'll do the same thing on this one. Keep it clean. Don't want a lot of excess on that. Do the same thing up here. That wing's going to fold over the edge there. Try not to go past your, your line, your mark. If you do, you can always clean it up, but save yourself the trouble. Okay. Cool. We'll give that a moment to tack up. While we do that, I'll clean up a little bit. While we went on that tack up, we're going to go ahead and put the flap on, on here. Okay. We'll use our time more efficiently. All right, so again, these templates are clear once you take off the backing. And they're clear. The benefit of them being clear is that you can see where they're going. So in this case, I want to put this on this piece of leather, and I want to mark a little line that tells me where to line up Where, when I apply this uh, flap, where I'm going to line it up at. And so I'll put a little line there, put a little dot there, and then I can come across here with my straight edge. I don't want to go all the way across, just enough so I can see it. And I know now the flap needs to be aligned up to that line, right? Perfect. So we're going to rough that out a little bit. So we're going to put some glue on it. We like to apply glue. glue. If you're going to stitch it, you might as well apply glue. Again, putting a little bit of... Uh, actually, I'm not going to put any glue there, but I'm going to put glue in the middle here. This is intentional. Um, this flap, the stitching for the flap, when you stitch it to the body, it doesn't go away to the edges. The reason why that is, before that, is you're going to have to fold this up a little bit to stitch all the way around. So give yourself a little room. I'm only going to apply glue in the middle section there and rough it up in the middle section because you'll be able to see underneath the flap a little bit. But right here, you will not. This is all going to be stitched down. If you didn't want to use glue, this would be a perfect space to use double-sided tape as well. A couple of vendors make a great double-sided tape for leather craft. This would be the place to use it. But today, I'm just going to use the glue. These are smaller spatula. Doesn't take a lot. I'm going to eyeball some of that glue right here as well. That will hold it in place while we get our stitches in. All right. All right. Let that tack up, and then we can go back to our gusset in the meantime. All right. So, gusset puzzle piece together like that. You want these as tight as possible. You don't want any gaps in those edges, right? It has been measured out for you perfectly already, so keep that really nice and tight and clean. And even. that perfect do the same thing on this side nice and tight and even fold it down there's your gusset almost assembled completely the next thing to do is to take this back to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch there and we're going to stitch there and then your gusset piece is fully assembled okay and since we're going back to the sewing machine, we may as well go ahead and do the flap as well. I think that should be ready for us to apply. Yep. So we'll put that down there. Make sure you cover up your scratch line. You don't want your scratch line to be showing. 
give it a couple taps with your hand or your hammer, whichever you prefer. And now both these pieces are ready to stitch at the sewing machine. All right, let's head over there now. That's how it's going to look. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our gusset now stitched up. We've got our flap stitched on. I made a little error there on the flap, but that's fine. You know, hey, this is real. It happens. It's not the best stitch job, but, you know, it'll, it'll work. Um, so now you can see how that gusset, the bottom of the gusset folds together like that. Next thing we're going to do, let's apply some glue. We're going to start our glue up process. Um, actually, no, it's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our handle on now. It's much far easier to put the handle on now um, before it gets assembled because it's going to be hard to reach inside the bag. We'll put our handle on like that. And what I'm going to use for the handle is I'm going to use a double cap rivet. We don't need to show necessarily the double cap rivet process. You guys probably already know how to do that. Nothing to it. Put the handle on, put the rivets in, and you're good to go. I'm going to step away just for a second and put the handle on, then I'll come right back. That's it for that one. Do the same thing on the other side. That's it. Okay. All right, so I think I've said this several times that we're done with the gusset assembly. I think we're actually done this time. You can see we have the handle on now, the bottom section is glued on and stitched on. One row of stitching on each one of those little wings there. This is going to fold down like that. It's going to be a 90 degree angle when we're done. Uh, this piece is, I think, ready for assembly. Yeah, it's ready for assembly. So the next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and get glue on all our pieces. We're going to put glue on the, uh, the front side, glue on the back side, and then glue around both edges of the, the gusset assembly. Let's start with the gusset. Now this is an area where you want to make sure you let your glue set up really well, right? It helps tremendously in the stitching process is if the glue is doing all the holding work for you. Right? That's the whole purpose of gluing. It holds it in place while you stitch. And if you rush this part of it, that hole is not going to be as great as it could be. And if you do it right, you can go ahead and assemble the entire bag, front and back, and do all your stitching at one, at one time, which is what I'm going to attempt to do. Instead of having to do the front, then come back and do the back, we'll just do it all at once. It takes a little hand coordination here to move pieces out of your way, but it's not that big of a deal. Just doing a little, like maybe it's probably a quarter inch or so on these, these wings and uh, on the side pieces. Get a little glue in there. It's going to be hidden, but you don't want to be sloppy about it. So 
there's one edge. Now let's go around and do the back edge or the other edge. I'm not sure if it will be front or back. doesn't really matter. I'm going to guess it. It could face either way. It's a little more glue than you need there, but that's okay. We can recover from that. The glue does stick. Don't forget this little inside piece here. That one's real important because that whole thing with glue. Almost there. Well, that glue sets up. We'll do the front as well, in this case the back, and then we'll do the front. This one's a little easier because you're just doing a bead of glue down the sides. get a little glue on the edges this edge here don't worry we're gonna take a, have take an opportunity to sand that a little bit get all that junk off the edges before we finish make sure that you know that's the top you don't want to put glue here on the top you just want to put it on the sides and bottom I've made that mistake before All right, so that glue now has to set up a little bit and get tacky. While we do that, we're going to do something else you can't do. And yeah, you could do it uh, once the bag's assembled, but uh, it is a little harder to do. So we're going to try to knock it out now while we wait for the glue to set up. All right. All right, so what we have here is a LOX fastener. That's LOX, L-O-X, LOX fastener, LOX fastener. Um, it's a four-part fastening system, and you have to have this little key to go along with it. line these up so you can see exactly how that works there right this is one of my favorite fasting systems it works really well for bags especially uh, bags with a little structure to them uh, it's very secure it holds everything very tight at the same time it's very easy to get in and out of and the way you get in and out of it is I'm gonna assemble a little bit you have two backing plates and then you have the male or I guess this is the female and the male part there let's get that confused Backing plate on, and both of these just so you can see how it works. The key that you have to get with it, 
fits in these holes and allows you to tighten the backing plates on or loosen it. Okay. You can also do it from the front on this piece as well. And of course, you see the back plate there, the key fits in there. I have done this without the key, but it is far, far uh, more difficult to do without the key. So if you plan on using locks, definitely use them the first time. Get yourself one of these keys. Maybe get a couple of them because they are easy to lose and just hold on to them. Um, I'm sure if you use this fastener system once, you're going to use it many more times after that. But the way this works is you have the female part and you have the male part. And there's a little spring there. You pull up on the spring and it opens the gate there. When you open the gate, it slips over the male part just fine. And it's secure. It won't pull off until you lift up on the button. Then it comes apart again, right? Uh, I typically have to show this to customers. They are not used to actually having to pull up and out on something. This one is, yes, a combination of both. Just by pinching your fingers together, you can probably see that it's, it's springy there, right? Um, so it goes in. Very secure. You pop out. That's it. Easy to use. So let's apply this to the bag now. The part that we're not going to be able to get to later, or at least not as easy, is going to be the, I guess that's going to be the male part. So this is going to go from the inside of the bag out. And we cut a nice size hole there. Now you know, understand why we cut a big hole there. We'll push it through. And then we'll put the, I guess it's not a backing plate, I guess it's the front plate, which is the same as the backing plate on the other piece. Put it on there. Tighten it with your hands to start. And then use your key to snug it down. The parts have little teeth on them, so it really grips into the leather really well. And you don't have to worry about them sliding around. Now, what I like to do, because the components do have um, words on them, in this case it says made in Germany, I like, to, I like to be readable. I don't want those words to be all over the place. So I like to tug it down just the plates where I know that the words are right side up. Then I'll flip it over and I'll do the rest of the tightening from the back. Don't like those words to be all crooked. That's it. If you want to be ultra secure with that, you can take a little piece, a little bit of Loctite and put that on the threads on the back side, and then that's not going anywhere, right? Very easy. On the front side, we'll do the front side one later. That'll probably be the very last thing we do is put that on there as a way to cap off this entire project. All right, so let's get the components together now. Now, what I like to do to start these is I want to pre-roll or pre-form these edges, right? This makes assembly much easier. You're not having to glue it up as well as bend at the same time. So take a moment to bend those edges down. This happens to be the edge that we skived. Bend them over. Just basically, you just tell the leather this is what you're going to have it do in a moment. This works for lots of gusses. If you have to get a gusset into a, a, a shape, you know, start bending it now. Bend it before you assemble it, right? That way when you get ready to curve. By the way, you could also do this around a curve. So if you had a curved gusset, you could do that bend now and then form the curve before you even get it onto the back part itself. Look at that. That makes assembly. That little step right there makes assembly that much easier. Get these pieces here as well. Work the whole gusset, gusset, get those edges ready to go. Can you, do, can you get through and get by without doing this? Sure you can. Sure. If you forget, it's no problem. You can still get it done. But, man, it makes the life a lot easier. All right. So now that's all preformed. We'll start putting it together. Starting at the bottom, that wing folded up. All you're going to do is match up your corners. The first corner you're going to match up is this one right here. Corners and edges is all you're, going to, all you're worried about right now. Take your time. There's no rush. You take your time now. It all comes together much, much better. Okay. Now, before you squish the entire edge down, go on to the other corner and match that one up. If the leather has stretched at all since you started, and it probably has, it's always easy to work back on it. All right? Work your way towards the center. Compress the leather if you need to a little bit here and there. All 
There you go. That's a good start there. Now, I'm going to grab one tool that's not already on the workbench. That's not a necessity, but man, it makes things like this go a lot easier. Let me grab that real fast. All right, so what we got here is, again, these aren't necessity. This is far from a necessity, but it's a very convenient thing to have when you're doing work like this or any bag and gusset work. These are Amy Roke um, Edge. I think they're just edge pliers or edge, you know, huh. these are edge pliers. You could do the same thing with a pair of cancel pliers that saddle makers use. I have those as well. But these Amy Roke ones are really nice because they have a spring in them. They open and close really easily. But definitely a splurge. They're not cheap. But convenient if you have access to them. All right, so the back, the bottom is done. The bottom part is done. You can see how that works together. You see how those wings now are fixed and it makes for a nice corner. So now you got to work your way up the side. To do that, you're going to make sure you line up the edges. There should be no gaps in your edges, or if they are, very small gaps in your edges. Once you get it right there, and then you're just working your way down the side of the, the front, or yeah, this is the front. And because you pre-rolled your edges, you're doing it without a, lot of, without a lot of extra fuss. You know, before I get all the way down to the top, that leather may have stretched a little bit. So I'm going to switch to the front, the top corner now and line the top corner up. A lot easier to compress the leather working your way down than it is the other way. Once, If you work your way all the way up this way and things don't line up, you're, you're in a bit of a pickle there. So I like to stop midway through, go to the top, then work my way back down. If I find that I need to compress the leather a little bit, that's okay. In this case, it did not stretch very much, which is great. That's awesome. That means that the bill knife skyver blade was pretty sharp. Look, it lines up perfectly. So if you have it available, you can take a hammer, use a hammer, sit it on the side of an anvil, and just tap that down and make sure that <clears throat> the glue is affixed very well. Or you can use your edge clamping, or edge crimping, I guess, edge clamping pliers, and work your way down the edge and does the same thing. Contact cement does need for you to hit it, bang it, or whatever to make it give it a good, uh, good, good contact, and to fix very well. You can't just pop it, just set it on there, and walk away. You need to do something like this to add a little weight. You need your hand. You can rub it with your finger, whatever. But if you really want that contact uh, uh, adhesive to stick really well, you need to rub it some kind of way. I was it was once explained to me about the molecular bonds and how contact adhesive, adhesives work and things like that. Um, honestly, it was all over my head a little bit. <clears throat> what I got from the conversation was that hitting it makes it stick better. So that's what we do. And from experience, it actually does work. Hitting it does make it stick better or, clamp, or cramping, clamping it does as well. So now we're going to go to the other side. <clears throat> Again, you're seeing we're pre-rolling those edges. It really comes into play. Just line it up. Take your time. If you get this put together right, the rest of it goes really easy. Work your way down the edge. Hopefully you can see that. Take your time. If you take your time here, you're going to reduce the amount of standing and shaping you have to do later. So obviously we don't want to do more work than we have to. I'm now going to flip over to the top edge. Line up the top edge really nicely, perfectly. Work my way back now. All right, now we can work from both sides. Try to make sure those edges stay nice and crisp and tight. Yep, it's gonna line up just fine. See there? Boom. That side of the gusset is in place on all three sides. Use my finger to make sure <clears throat> it's stuck down there. Before I move on, take my edge clamping pliers, hit it one more time. That's stuck together very well. This is a critical corner here. And you can see how that all folds together. It folded up, so now it matches. You can see the inside edge where it matches there. 
hopefully that's, um, it will probably make more sense once you do it once or twice for yourself. Um, it looks more complicated than it really is. Once you do it, you'll realize this is really, really simple, dead simple to do. It takes a little time. You gotta be a little careful, match the edges up, but if you measure right and you cut you know, everything uh, properly, it's gonna be perfect. If we were doing a different gusset type, we may have to go this, this process where we have to cut it long and trim it back and do all these extra measurements. I've even seen folks where they have to, they put it on the bag one time to get the measurement right, then they take it off the bag and then measure it again. Doing it this way, you measure, cut, and you can be assured it's gonna to come together right. All right, so let's move over to the, uh, the back side. Again, we're gonna roll these edges now, make your life easier. Preform the leather a little bit. Tell it where it's gonna go, where you want it to go. Work your way around. This glue is the perfect amount of tacky right now. <clears throat> you skive the leather so it makes that a little easier. <clears throat> You can see it's already taken the shape of that side piece there. That's why it makes it easier. You don't have to fight it once you get the, once you start putting it together. Now, last time I worked my way from the bottom, you could work your way from the top. I think it's a little easier maybe because I have bigger fingers. I think it's easier to work from, your, from the bottom up. That's what I'll continue to do here. So again, very first thing I'm gonna do is line up those corners. Before I complete, complete that one, I'm gonna move to the other corner. Get the 90 degree angles there. And work my way back to the middle. That's the way I like to do it. That's good. Before I move on, I'm gonna hit it with the pliers again, just to make sure that's affixed very well before I start tugging on it. And then you can move on to the sides. Line the wings up, the edge. Going over to the top edge, doing the same thing. working my way towards the middle. Being very careful <clears throat> to keep those edges together. See with the edge pliers again. You can fold that flap out of the way. Remember I told you earlier, the reason why we didn't stitch all the way to the edge is because we, we needed room to move that flap out of the way. We're gonna have to stitch in there to close this up. Okay, three of four sides done. Let's work our way to the other side. The glue is doing its job so far. Nothing's falling apart on us. We're gonna work our way in here, get those edges nice and aligned well. This is the critical corner gap right there. That's the one you want to be nice and tight. Good, let's go up to the top. Work our, work our way to the middle. Looks like it's gonna be perfect. It is. Cool. And then for the last time, We'll take our pliers or hammer or your finger, whatever is easiest for you, whatever you have available, 
and work that edge and make sure that glue is affixed really, really well. Look there, you got a wine soap. Pretty close. So, guess this together, nice formed edge. The bag holds itself open because the way we worked it out. 90 degree angle bottom, but I'm not a big fan of these square corners here, okay? Needed them when we we're putting it together, but now that it's all put together, I wanna, I wanna round that off a little bit. So, I'm gonna take my corner punches here. Before we go take it back to the sewing machine, we're gonna knock off these corners. Now, you can do this different ways. Um, you can put it here, done that before. If you have the dexterity to do that, so I may try that here. Put it over an anvil or whatever. This is, anyway, there's probably a thousand and one ways to do this. Pick whichever way works best for you. It's all about the end result, not about the, the way it gets done. Nice rounded corner there, and it'll stitch a lot easier. You don't have to stop and start. You could leave a 90 degree angle if you wanted to, or you can make that a bit more of a blunted or a smaller radius type of a, a, a turn. That's probably, this is labeled as a 25 millimeter uh, corner punch. Uh, I like it, looks good. Do what you think is comfortable. Do what you think makes more sense for your bag. When I did the alligator tote bag or alligator wine tote not too long ago, I think I used maybe like a 15 millimeter radius. It just gave it a slightly different look. Try not to drop your bag. You know, the other way to do this is to lay it on the table and do it from this side. This works just as fine too, go down. Just want to point that out. Cool. All right. What do you think? What's left to be done? Stitch. We're going to top stitch it on this side and on this side at the sewing machine. We left enough room for our, our press foot to get around there. If you're hand stitching it, do your hand stitching. There's enough room for you to do that. Uh, stitch it however, however you want, whatever makes sense to you. Um, but that's the next step. Let's go take care of the stitching real quick.
finished done. Let's do clean up the edges, burnish it, put it to rest. Okay, we are in the home stretch now for sure. It is definitely a bag. Now the goal is uh, the bag's done. Now the goal is just to clean it up. We're going to get the edges straightened up. Uh, we're going to knock off some of the glue on these edges and do a little bit of sanding. We shouldn't have to do a lot of sanding because we took our time with putting the edges together. Okay, and because of that, this should be fairly simple. I have a sanding pad here. You could use a Dremel. You could take it to your sanding station, whatever you want to use. Um, but the goal is just to even out these edges a little bit and knock off some of the glue that may have been on the edges, right? Not much. Yep, and all I'm doing is I'm filling for glue. Any, not runoff, but any excess glue. Filling to make sure the edges are smooth and even. You can probably spend as much or as little time on this process, this step as you want. I try to go in one direction as it seems to help the uh, the burnishing process later. All that excess glue is gone. It's starting to smooth out, in fact. Now let's do the back side. Now this is already burnished. This is already finished, so we don't want to rough that up at all, but we do want to rough up this edge. So take your time here. I'm actually going to change the directions a little bit. Let's see. Let's go this way. Not removing that much material. Okay. There we go. That should be sufficient for the edges. All right, so this inside gusset has been is fairly thin. We're not going to bevel the inside of that. We are going to we are however going to bevel the outside. So, let's use the edge of our table again. Take our number 2 edger. We're going to use it pretty lightly, but we're going to take our number two bronze tools edger and just knock off that sharp corner of the gusset. The sanding did some of the work for you already. You don't have to hit, hit it very hard, just a little bit, just so it's not a sharp edge. And work your way around the corners very carefully. Doesn't take a lot.
Let's go. That's one side. Let's do the other side quickly. Edges are ready to be dyed and burnished. <clears throat> now, to dye, dye does not come off very easily. So take your time. Don't want to ruin your project at the very end here. Work your way around very carefully. Before we move on to another section, I'm going to go ahead and burnish this while it's still a little damp. You can do as much as much or as little as burnishing as you feel is necessary for your project. I'm burnishing this the same way I burnished the, uh, the top pieces. And you may not be able to see it on camera, but that's already a nice slick edge. Looks good. I'm going to lose that. Okay. Let's do the other side now. Okay, the bottom. Very nice. Very nice, very nice. Okay, front side is done. We just need to do the back side. I feel like I feel a little bit of glue there, so we're going to hit that. Didn't see the dye soaking in quite as well as I liked, which tells me there's probably a little bit of glue left on that edge. So we'll knock that off real quick and come back at it. Yep, that's much better. Definitely a little more glue on this edge than I had uh, thought, so we want to knock that off. We may have to work a little harder, rub it out of the way, and still burnish, but we'll get it.
other side. Is even down and can burnish. Next section needed a little more work. There we go. Much better. Much better. And finally, we'll do the bottom. easy all right so the edges are burnished they're dyed and finished we can make sure we trim up any little fuzzy uh, stitching marks I think we have none actually we already got those Let's thread our flat bot back through. Okay, that's done. Very last thing on this one is going to be able to put the uh, the top latch on. Snug that down. Is it catching? No. Make sure the words are lined up. Nicely. There we go. Now snug it down all the way. Okay. Let's clean up some of those seams. Floater here. Just breaks up some of the excess glue if there is any. I'm sure there is. We want our customer or our family or friends to think it is and we want them to just be able to use it. Not have to worry about fixing anything. Clean it up nice and tidy.
Perfect. There's your tote. Oh, one thing. Let me grab a bottle. We'll grab a cheap bottle of display wine. Something about the bag being full, having something that makes it look just that much better. There you go. Knock off some of the maker dust. I think that's it. Wine tote. That easy.